So once I create the sketch on the existing, uh, you know, the plane, and if I want to extrude it, there are several options. Uh, you know, one is, you know, by default, that is the no control eight, uh, not control A. It's control eight. Yeah. So um, we can change the direction here. Uh, we can even go up to uh, up to the surface. And I can click on the surface so that way the extrude can be uh, completed up to that surface we select. So even though if we change the dimension of the part, uh, the extruded length will always match up with this surface. So even if we change this overall dimension from 200 to 300 later on, uh, this extruded length will always match up with the surface. So which means that it will get automatically um, you know, taken care of. So some of the advantages of uh, instead of using the blind, uh, we can make use of either up to the vertex or up to the surface uh, or up to the body, or something like that. Uh, whatever the appropriate option, we can always make use of it instead of providing the hard uh, dimensions. So sometimes um, based on what dimensions are provided, if the numbers are given, then you should specify the numbers. But if no numbers are specified, and you can see that the extruded length is coinciding with one of the edges or the faces, then you can always make use of some of the other options. So just to you know, keep that in mind. Also watch in the videos that how the, uh, you know, the uh, from instead of from sketching plane, you can use instead of uh, from surface, or uh, you know, you can use the offset option also. Those things are uh, explained in the video as well. So. Please take a look at the uh, first video of the second model to know more options uh, for this from uh, you know, drop down menu. So if I click OK here, okay, so that's how you know you can uh, create the um, extrude uh, uh, extrude operation. Let me just quickly create one more um, uh, one more. Uh, feature here by creating a triangular sketch so that I can uh, show you something else as how we want to extrude it, uh, the depth in the other directions. Uh, let me um, extrude this particular feature up to the surface, uh, let's say here. Uh, let me see if it Gonna work. That's fine. Okay. So let's say uh, now on this uh, surface, if I uh, want to sketch, um, let's say a rectangle, something like this. So you know when we extrude uh, the uh, depth, for example, if I go to feature and extrude, by default the extruded uh, length is always normal to the plane that we create the sketch. So for example, uh, if I create this uh, sketch and try to extrude it, you can see it in the uh, preview that the extruded direction is normal to the face that we've created the sketch on. But let's say we wanted to extrude this sketch along this uh, slanted face direction, then we need to make use of this uh, direction of extrusion. So first we need to click on this window and then click either the edge or the face along which we want to uh, create it. So if I click on that, it's creating perpendicular to it. But if I, let's say, unselect it, let's say I select the edge, then you can see the extruded direction can be uh, set accordingly. So this is the input window where you can set the direction of extrusion. If we don't select it, then the sketch will be automatically extruded normal to the face on which we have created the sketch. Otherwise, it can be extruded in the direction as we select the edge. Okay. So that's uh, you know another uh, option for extruding uh, the base or extruding boss slash base based on which direction we want to extrude. Okay, anytime we create the sketch, uh, we need to create it on the plane. For example, if we click on this face, either we can start off by 
clicking on the face and using from this pop-up window, either we can click on the sketch directly or uh, we can click on normal do. Uh, you know, most of the times normal do is the preferred option uh, because it gives you an idea as how you are uh, using the uh, dimensions or creating the sketches. Let's say you create uh, some sketch on it and um, let's say we want to go to features and say extrude cut. Again, just like the extrude base, you have uh, several options of, uh, ex you know, uh, either using the blind, where you can, you know, provide hard numbers here, or you can say through all. So through all in the sense, it's gonna uh, make a hole by going through, um, you know, entirely in the, uh, in the solid model. Uh, we can go up to the next also. So whichever the you know the next face that it encounters, it will create the hole up to that, up to the next, because there may be uh, some other features next to it, and we don't want to create the hole all the way through going through those features as well. So we can say up to next, which means only this portion of the solid model uh, can be uh, you know created with the hole. You can say up to the vertex or up to the surface. When we say up to the surface, uh, you know you can select whatever the up to the surface that you want to do it. Similar to the extrude direction, uh, you can also say which direction you want to create that hole. So that way the direction of the hole can also be controlled. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so, you know, make use of all these uh, different uh, dimensions as well. So if I say blind, and um, let's say, uh, you know, I, uh, instead of, you know, instead of giving the hard number, what I want to say is that instead of giving the hard numbers, uh, if it says the hole is through, uh, you don't really want to use the numbers, but you just say through all. Or you can say up to the surface and click on that face and then click OK. So that's how the hole will be created uh, through all. So that's the through all hole, or it's up to the surface hole. It's you know pretty much uh, the same meaning uh, to that. So what happens is that uh, even if we uh, you know change the um, dimension, so even if we change this dimension, uh, the hole will also be uh, you know extended. So let's say we change it from 200 to let's say 250. Okay, then also the hole will be um, you know, extend it accordingly. So that's, you know, basically why the, um, you know, using these different options uh, for the solid model is, uh, is very important as, uh, you know, how we create it. So, uh, you know, in the cut extrude feature, if I right click and say edit feature, instead of up to the face, if we had used blind and say, uh, you know, 250 millimeters and then click OK. So right now you can see the hole, you know, making it as a through hole. Uh, but later on, if we've been asked to uh, modify the part, and let's say instead of 250, we, you know, again, change it to, let's say, 300. Okay. So in this case, you don't see the now, you don't see hole, which is now through all. If we try to uh, look at it in the hidden line. So now you can see the hole was only uh, created up to 200 uh, millimeter or 250 millimeters length. So it just stayed there. Even though the outer dimension changed, the hole just stayed there. So that's basically the problem when uh, if we've been asked to use uh, or create the feature, which is not based on the hard dimensions, but if it is based on uh, you know certain constraints such as you know, make it either a through all or make it up to that face. So we should use those constraints and not use the hard numbers because then later on when we modify the other dimensions, uh, we want those holes uh, should also automatically be taken care of. Okay, so that's basically the idea of, uh, you know, using uh, some of the features in that um, you know, feature, uh, edit feature. So some of these uh, options here that instead of just blind, you can use through all or up to next, up to vertex or up to surface, 
or even offset from surface uh, depending on how the dimensions are provided. All right, so that's the boss uh, extrude boss slash uh, extrude base. Um, the next feature we can look at uh, is the uh, revolve. So if I start a new part, and uh, let's say I start off with the uh, front plane this time. Um, again, uh, the revolve base is pretty much the same as uh, the uh, extrude base, except the fact that uh, you know you have um, revolve feature instead of adding the material uh, in the linear direction. We are basically adding the material in the um, you know revolve. Uh, sense. So, you know, of course, uh, I'm not clearly, uh, you know, fully defining this sketch, but, uh, you know, obviously when the, um, you know, the dimensions are specified, you can always uh, make the sketch fully defined. And when we go to features and revolve boss slash pace, depending on what axis of revolution is, uh, the solid model will be created. So, for example, if uh, you know this vertical line y-axis is taken as the axis of revolution, and if I click OK, then you get the revolved uh, solid model like this. Otherwise, you can right-click Edit Feature, and instead of uh, uh, that vertical line, let's say if I use this uh, horizontal line here, then you get altogether a uh, different type of uh, solid model. Okay, so uh, it's, uh, you know, basically the cross section that uh, you really need to uh, worry about when we uh, create the revolve features. And again, um, just like the revolve base, the revolve cut will also work. Uh, for example, if we, um, um, you know, let me, um, let me uh, make the use of, uh, you know, either uh, the front plane, let me make use of the front plane because that's where we have created the sketch. So if I again uh, right click on the front plane and use normal to option, and then I go to sketch, and let's say I want to cut a groove, and I create a circle, something like this. So now I want to revolve this circle by using the revolve cut so that I can cut a groove on the cylindrical face. But in order to do that, now I need to revolve it uh, in the YZ plane. And so I need a uh, axis of revolution as the X axis. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, again, I'm going to do control eight and I'll use the center line and connect it there and then I can go to features revolve cut so this line center line is used as the axis of revolution and using 360 degrees you can uh, then see the preview of how the revolve cut is going to be created so I'm clicking OK here and you know that's how we can cut a groove uh, on the cylindrical face by using the revolve cut feature, okay? Um, again, the more the practice you uh, do working with this uh, revolve uh, feature, uh, you know, more confidence uh, you will get it um, based on, uh, you know, looking at the geometry and the dimensions, uh, you need to be able to see how, uh, how the features can be created. Okay, so that's the revolve uh, base, uh, slash pause and revolve cut. Um, you know, like I said, again, I'm going to go over these features one by one as uh, given in the uh, second module videos. And, you know, you can watch these, uh, you know, examples. And again, from uh, the videos also, you can take a look at them and work on the uh, in-class problems and the homework problems. Uh, and of course, you can uh, uh, talk with me or Sean uh, if, uh, if you're stuck somewhere or if you need some help. Uh, to work on your assignments. Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is the fillet and the chamfer. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a new part again. 
uh, just to demonstrate this. Uh, I'm going to go to the front plane, and this time I will create the L cross section. Um, let me first make this L cross section. And let me make the outer lens. If I control select both these uh, outer edges, uh, then you would see the uh, pop-up box appears to define the constraint. So if I click on first this vertical y-axis line and then hold down the control key and click on this horizontal line, then I can see what kind of uh, relations that I want to add. I'm going to say make equal. So you would see that these equal signs appear as the uh, relations defined. I'm also going to click on this thickness horizontal line and this thickness the vertical line using the or holding the control key down and then I can say make equal. So again you can see that the equal constraint is displayed as I uh, hover my mouse uh, on these two edges. Okay. So now all you need to do is just provide the uh, smart dimension to um, some of these numbers here. So let's say if I make that 150 and uh, make this as, uh, let's say, uh, 175. So now the sketch is completely defined because all other dimensions are automatically uh, defined in this case. At any time, if you want to uh, get rid of the uh, relations, uh, you can always just click on it, uh, right click on it, and delete it. Or you can go to display slash delete relations. Okay, you can add relations or you can display the existing relations. And it will show you on the left side on the properties uh, that what are the relations right now. It will include all the relations even though you have not uh, you know, added them uh, on your own, but they were existing before. For example, when we created this horizontal line, the relation of horizontal was automatically added even though we didn't add it uh, you know explicitly uh, there's another horizontal line which is this one so all these horizontal vertical lines were added as we created the sketches equal length is something that we've added uh, another equal length uh, you know we added and then distance one and then distance three so these are all the constraints as even though um, we so if, even if we put the geometrical constraints or if we provide the uh, algebraic or the numerical constraints, they are still uh, the relations of uh, the edges uh, related to each other or the points with respect to each other. And so, you know, they will all be displayed under this, which you can uh, delete them. If you, if you scroll it down, whichever the relation you want to get rid of, you can click on it and say delete and that way you can free up. Uh, the constraints in your uh, graphics area. All right, so once we've done with this L shape, we're going to extrude it. Um, let me extrude it in the other way by, let's say, 200 millimeters. Click on the check mark. And so we will look at the fillet option. So, uh, fillet option. so fillet is uh, something that is used to uh, provide the rounding. Yes, uh, John, we typically should wait uh, until we add the fillet. So fillet is usually uh, the last, very last uh, feature that we should add on the solid model. That's a, uh, that's a good question, uh, you know, because the way the dimensions are provided, uh, most of the times we first need to create uh, these straight edges and extrude them or, uh, you know, whatever the features we want to add it. And then at the end, uh, we typically add the um, fill it. Yes, exactly. It's as uh, as typical in any other solid modeling software. So you know the basic philosophy of all the solid modeling feature-based parametric uh, modelers, including uh, SolidWorks, Inventor, KDA, and all these software. It's it's pretty much the same. Um, and so the same is applicable in the SolidWorks as well. Um, so different kinds of fill it that we can specify here. First one is uh, pretty straightforward, the constant size fillet, where uh, we can just simply uh, select any edge. 
you know, and then um, assign whatever the dimension that you want to add, and then uh, click OK. If it's the uh, outer edge, then it rounds it, or if it's the interior edge, then it basically going to provide the fillet, uh, which means that it's going to add the material. So if you see here, uh, it's going to add the material. Right? So it's going to add the material underneath that yellow preview and we provide the rounding, it's going to subtract the material. So it's going to get rid of this extra material here. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so that is how you know we can do this simplest uh, form of the rounding and obviously you can see the change in the transition of the surfaces. So we want to avoid the sharp corners for uh, getting rid of these stress concentrations. So uh, these are all different surfaces. Okay. Um, we can again roll back uh, the features to bring the solid model in the position that we were, uh, you know, before few features. So uh, this roll back bar is very important. You can always uh, do the uh, debugging of it, or if you create uh, some error that messes up with some other features, you can always roll it back to the place where the model was working correctly, and then fix those errors, and then you can again roll it down to do that. You can again, if you, if you want to hide the feature, you can again right click on the uh, feature that you created and use the uh, suppress option. So if you click on suppress, features will get uh, you know, suppressed or disabled or they will be grayed out and they will not be a part of uh, you know, the mass calculation. Um, okay, so the question that uh, you know, you're asking is that are we allowed to use the same drawing template? Uh, Sean is going to be uploading a new template file. So Either you can create a new template, uh, you know, based on the second video in the module one, or just wait for Sean to provide you with the template. Uh, you know, either of that, you can use it. But um, you know, do not use uh, any of the uh, template or any of the material that uh, you know you worked on in the uh, previous uh, semesters. Okay. Um, you know, we'll see uh, if the template is available or not, but uh, in any case, you know, you can just simply uh, create, uh, if Sean uploads that template or if I get a chance to upload the template, I'll do that. But if not, uh, you know, you can always uh, create, uh, you know, your own template and um, use that. So Sean is saying that he will provide the template at the uh, end of the class. Um, so we are good with it. Um, you know, anyway, you know, I have extended the homework one uh, deadline uh, Thing up to Friday or something, uh, just to give you guys a little bit more uh, chance uh, you know, to work on the uh, problems. All right, so uh, you know, speaking of mass, you know, every time when we create the solid model, obviously the material is important as what kind of material we are using, and how much is the mass of your component. That's where the accuracy of the dimensions will be uh, verified. So. First thing, you know, before uh, you know, we uh, do for the mass calculation, we need to assign the material. So if you um, right click on the material, most commonly used materials uh, that you can use, uh, you know, one can assign here. For example, if I want to use copper, I can just simply click on the copper and it will try to uh, match the color of the uh, material that you're assigning. And once you do that, uh, then uh, you can go to evaluate and then click on the mass properties. There you can see the mass properties of uh, the solid model that we have created. Also, it tells you what are the coordinates uh, for the center of mass with respect to the default coordinate system that the part is created with. Uh, these things are going to be important when we look at the assembly a little bit later on uh, in the semester. But for now, as far as the solid models are uh, concerned, you can uh, create uh, the 
material that you want to assign or uh, and then you can get the mass from going into the evaluate and mass properties. Again, if you want to assign uh, the material that is not existing in the list, then again, you can go to right click and then click on the edit material option. And here you have the whole uh, list of uh, SOLIDWORKS material. And these are categorized into um, all different types of steel uh, or iron or aluminum alloys or the copper alloys and you know, so on. There are all different types of, uh, uh, you know, the types of materials available. So maybe, you know, you can uh, use that. So if the material is not assigned for the first couple of homeworks or in-class works, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, as we, you know, go along uh, for uh, the future homeworks uh, for a little bit more complicated problems, uh, we'll ask you to verify the mass properties based on the solid model that you created. All right, uh, so that's, uh, you know, the one of the option for uh, fill it using the constant radius and suppress it so that it shows up again. Um, or you can even uh, suppress it to, you know, hide that feature. I'm going to go to the Features tab, click on the fillet, and um, the next option is the variable size fillet. We don't really, really uh, use this, uh, you know, very often, uh, but, uh, you know, this is something nice to have that uh, you can use it for the variable size fillet. So, for example, if I click on this edge, by default it gives some, you know, fixed number of points based on the length of the edge we select. And we can uh, assign the radius, let's say, five uh, millimeter radius on this side, and let's say uh, 15 millimeters radius on the other side, and the transition will take place going from 5 to 15 millimeters based on uh, the number of points uh, those are defined there. So if you scroll down here, instead of 3, if we, uh, you know, make it uh, whatever the number of points that we use to make it more smoother transition and then be able to create the radius uh, with a variable size. So 5 on this side and 15 on that side and then depending on the number of points uh, you have, uh, the smoothness in the transition uh, can be adjusted. Okay. So that's the uh, variable size of the way. Let me um, again uh, suppress that. The other uh, options for uh, fillet are uh, one is the face fillet, which is you know pretty much same as the edge fillet, except the fact that instead of selecting the edge, you're going to select the two faces uh, between which you want to add the uh, fillet. So if I click on the first face here, go back to the input window, and then click on the second face, and then based on the value that we provide, the radius of the fillet will be created. So all these options are, uh, you know, fairly intuitive. Uh, you can uh, try some of these features, you know, even on your own, uh, or you know, watch uh, the videos and all that. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, um, at least you know, from understanding the features. But to create the complicated parts and the solid models, obviously you need more practice uh, in, uh, you know, visualizing the drawings and the dimensions uh, from it. Okay, so the last option is the round fillet. Full round fillet is uh, requiring the input of three uh, different faces which are connected to each other and it can provide the uh, round where, uh, you know, it is tangential to those straight faces. For example, the first face, if I select this, second face, which is the middle face, is on the top and the third face is the back one then it will create the round fillet. Uh, and this uh, curve is uh, tangential to the straight edges. So, you know, you don't really need to specify any particular value of the fillet here. It will take care of itself. And once I click OK, so the full round fillet can be created. 
So different options for fillet um, that you can uh, uh, look at it here. Now let me uh, just quickly uh, talk about the chamfer. Chamfer, you can find it uh, under the fillet. Uh, you can always uh, look for the, uh, you know, the different types of features. Um, it should be somewhere. So insert. Uh, there must be some options for features somewhere here. And just like uh, the, all right, I'm not able to find it right now. It's because of the, uh, you know, the different resolution that I have here. But uh, it, it's it's somewhere that you can see the whole list of features. Maybe that you know, we can explore that a little later. Uh, but the chamfer is under the fillet, so if I click on the chamfer, again, different options for assigning the chamfer. Uh, one is the angle distance, so if I click on the edge, instead of the uh, rounded face, you get this, get this slanted face, and you can specify it in terms of uh, the distance and the angle. And also make sure, you know, how the uh, arrow is basically pointing, the dimensions are specified with respect to that. So if I click, you know, increase um, this, these numbers, let's say uh, going from uh, 10, let's say 12, or let's say 14. So you can notice that the distance increases in the direction of the arrow um, indicator. And the angle is also with respect to the line in which the arrow is pointing and then the slanted face. So that's basically the angle. Uh, if I increase from 45 to let's say 60, you can see that this particular angle increases. So it's important to know what uh, the angle and the distance values that we're providing um, based on the direction of this arrow. Sometimes the numbers could be given in with respect to the other direction, but your chamfer is pointing in the other direction, so you need to accordingly um, adjust these numbers so that you can get the accurate chamfer. And once you click OK, this slanted face for the chamfer will appear, and you can create that as the feature. Okay, um, so that's one of the option of the. Uh, providing chamfer. Um, no, yeah, you can create uh, these features, you know, during the sketch itself. So if I understand uh, this question correctly, um, that yes, you could create, uh, you know, this particular feature uh, during the sketch itself, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's from the manufacturing or fabrication point of view. If you have uh, the identifiable features, uh, then the machining softwares can recognize those um, features that you, uh, you know, create on the solid model, and then accordingly the machining operations can be set up accordingly. So you can figure out what tools needs to be used uh, in order to provide chamfers. Uh, and so on. So, uh, you know, this is strictly from the machining point of view that if you have them added as the features, uh, then uh, it becomes easier uh, to, to do that. So that's the um, purpose of adding the features. I mean, you know, using, you know, for creating, creating the whole you know, you can use the whole wizard or you can use the extrude cut. But if you use the whole wizard, you know, we, we're going to look at it uh, in the next week that what are the different functionalities of the whole wizards are. Uh, it's easier for the machining uh, software to figure out what kind of threads you want or what kind of poles, uh, what diameter of the hole or what type of bolt uh, that you're going to be using it once you use those specifications using that whole wizard instead of just using the extruded cut. So it's always recommended to use the uh, features if you can add it instead of uh, you know, just doing everything at the sketching stage itself. Okay. 
Um, so, you know, if, if you have any additional questions, uh, you know, Sean, we can, uh, um, you know, talk about that uh, later. For the time being, let's move on to the other uh, options for the chamfer. So, if I go to chamfer again, uh, instead of using angle distance, we can uh, use the distance distance uh, option. And in that, we have either symmetric or asymmetric, uh, you know, depending on how we want to do it. So, for example, if I use this, so it's uh, both directions is 14 millimeters and 40 millimeters. Uh, if I make it five directions, is five millimeters for the chamfer. If we make it asymmetric, uh, then one direction is five, the other direction is 10, as you can see here. And you can change the values from this graphics windows as well. So if you make it seven, for example, that will shift. Or if you make it uh, 15, downward. So based on that also, you can uh, uh, create the chamfer. All right, um, so, you know, I would let you explore uh, the other type of chamfers. For example, vertex, you just select the vertex and you need to provide the numbers in three different directions or um, even for you know, knowing how to do it face to face, uh, you know, you can watch uh, the video also and you will be able to get an idea of how to create the uh, chamfers. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you can um, do this uh, chamfers or fillet uh, in, in one shot uh, it's also. For example, if I want to create fillets uh, at various uh, edges in one shot, and if they're having all the same values, then uh, you can uh, do them all at the same time. So that way you don't have to uh, you know, go back and forth and uh, add these features um, every time uh, one by one. So you can club all of these uh, fillets in one shot itself. The only thing is that they need to be all the same values and then, um, yeah, so once you uh, change uh, one of the numbers by clicking on edit feature, then all the numbers are going to be changed. So uh, that's about the play and the uh, chamfer features. Let's take a look at the draft feature now. The draft is uh, basically adding the tapered uh, surface to the solid model. Uh, for example, uh, if I start a new part, and the same example I've uh, shown in the uh, video as well, uh, if I create a, for example, a hexagon or a hexagonal prism, uh, prism um, so let me first create the uh, hexagon and uh, the inscribe here. Also, I'm going to align this, this, this point and the origin uh, as the horizontal. And if I extrude it, uh, let's say by 200 millimeters, um, I can create uh, the draft here for, uh, for this solid model. So if I click on uh, draft, First thing we need to do is how much is the angle that we need to provide. So let's say I want to use uh, 20 degrees angle. Then there are two things. One is the neutral plane and the other one is the plane that you need to draft or the face that you need to draft. So for the neutral plane, the uh, direction uh, or you know the, uh, the geometry of the face will always retain uh, its dimension. So that's not going to be uh, disturbed. But the faces that we are drafting, uh, you know, that will be drafted with the angles uh, that we define here. And then because of those changes, some other geometries will also be changed. So let's say if we use the neutral plane as like this, the top face, and let's say the face that we want to draft, let's say this one, uh, and let's say the other one also. So as long as the arrow is pointing outward, it means that we will be adding the material. Okay. Uh, but if the arrow is pointing downward, uh, which we can change it by clicking on the reverse direction here. So if we 
uh, clicking on this arrow in the downward direction, then the material will be subtracted, which means the uh, you know you're going to be uh, pushing these faces inside the uh, solid mark. So let's first take a look at how we push it outward. So it's going in the outward direction, and we use 20 degrees. Then you can notice that with respect to this neutral plane, this face, which was vertical before, it's now drafted outward by 20 degrees, both these faces that you had selected. Okay, And in order to create this face um, by, by 20 degrees, the other faces adjacent to them had to change their, uh, you know, the dimensions because of uh, the requirement to keep the uh, continuity. Even the bottom face had to change the dimensions, but not the new true plane. If I right click edit feature and instead of outward, let's see if I push them inward and click OK, then these faces are pushed inward, the two faces that we selected by 20 degrees. Okay, so that's the uh, draft uh, feature that we can use to uh, change the orientation of the faces. Uh, let's say instead of uh, this one, the top one, we, let's say we use the um, neutral plane as one of the side faces. And let's say the faces that we want to draft is the this top. So I'm just reversing it. Now, again, look at the arrow. If it is outward direction, then remember that anytime the arrow is in the downward, uh, the outward direction, then the material will be added. And if it's inward, then the material will be subtracted. So if it's added, it means that this face has to lift up by the angle we specify, which is 20 degrees here. So if that 20 degrees, the face will be lifted to add more material in the solid model by 20 degrees. Uh, again, if I edit the feature and if I change the arrow direction to inward, then it will be pushed down to reduce the amount of material. And this face is now 20 degrees uh, you know, in the uh, downward uh, direction with respect to the horizontal uh, face that it was before with respect to this neutral plane. So you can see that the neutral plane retains its uh, dimensions, but uh, not the other faces. Uh, you know, and you know, because obviously uh, it has to accommodate the draft that we're providing on this face. But this time the uh, bottommost face did not uh, change, had to change any uh, dimensions because it wasn't really affected. So pay attention to uh, you know these small details that uh, that we can use to create uh, the draft feature. All right, uh, one more thing that, you know, when we create this draft, uh, either we can add it as a draft feature where we have more control, but if I uh, right click on the boss extrude feature and edit feature, so when we create a sketch and we try to extrude it, at that time itself, you can uh, also add the draft. So you would see the option here uh, that says draft is on or off. So by default, it's off, but if we turn it on, and let's say we uh, use some value here, let's say 20 degrees. So either it can be drafted inward or it can be drafted outward. So we can take care of the draft. The only thing is that it has a limited control, which means that you can only uh, use the base sketch or whatever the sketch that you're trying to extrude, only that sketch will be treated as the neutral plane by default. Okay, and so, depending on the direction of the extrusion, uh, the other phases as they are generated will be drafted by that amount of angle. So, you know, we can also, uh, during the creation of the boss extrude, also we can uh, you know, make use of this uh, draft feature. Okay. So various ways and various uh, types of design intents uh, to create the solid models. Um, you know, as you get more practice and you try to explore more features and options, um, you know you can uh, do um, the same solid model by so many different ways. Uh, 
All right, so that's the uh, draft feature. Uh, let me now go over the uh, rip and the reference planes. Um, very important, the reference planes as we create in the uh, any solid model that you want to create. Uh, let me go to window and um, uh, let's see which uh, part was that. Uh, this one, yeah, this one here. Um, let me work on the same uh, model again to create the reference plane and uh, the read feature here. So the reference plane, uh, the, other than the front, top, and right, we also have other planes that we can choose from. Uh, but some, some of the times we need to use um, additional planes than what the existing planes we have. And the reference planes can be created only if you are out of the sketching mode. If you are in the active sketch, cannot create the additional reference planes. And to do that, we need to go to the Features tab and go to the Reference Geometry and then use the either reference plane or uh, create uh, the axis or create extra coordinate systems and so on. So here, if you use the reference plane, it will ask you uh, what are the references that you want to create the plane. So the first uh, reference, let's say I want to create a plane here. It tells you that it can create a plane which is 10 millimeters at the offset uh, distance from the selected plane, and it shows this review. Uh, we can also create multiple planes at whatever the distance we specify. You can flip offset to create them in the other directions as well. Um, you can also choose these other options. For example, if I say perpendicular, it will say, uh, yes, it can create a plane that is perpendicular to the face that we selected, but it's showing in the yellow color because uh, there can be infinite number of planes that can be created which will be perpendicular to this face. And that's the reason why it needs another reference. So it says select references and constraints. So the first reference is that And the second reference is looking for the input. So if I select this edge, now it can uh, you know, create the plane that is perpendicular to the selected face and passing through this line. So that means it can be only one plane that can be created. And once all the definitions are complete, then it will say it's fully defined. Uh, then you can click on the check mark and it will show in the uh, feature manager design tree by the name plane one. And so now you can uh, start sketching on this plane, uh, you know, like the normal uh, uh, sketches that you that you typically create. Okay. So this circle is now you can see that it's created uh, on this plane here. Okay. There are different options of creating the planes. Uh, for example, you can again go to the features reference geometry plane. Um, you can uh, first, let's say you select this plane. You can create the plane at certain angles also with respect to the face uh, that you've created. You can also use the mid plane option. Um, so the first uh, reference is this left side L shaped face we selected. Uh, let's say for the second reference, we use the other side of this L shape. So it's going to create the plane that is exactly at the mid midway between the two faces selected. Once I click OK, it will uh, you know select this uh, or you know create this second plane. Okay, so that's that's how we can uh, create uh, you know the planes um, you know as we as we want to create uh, in the solid model. Sometimes you want to create the extrude cut at certain angle, so that way uh, you know you can also make use of that option as well. So again, if you want to create the plane at an angle, so you go to reference geometry plane. Um, let's say I select first reference as this. Um, I can you know, select the angle, let's say uh, 45 degrees, but still uh, the reference is not complete. Um, so let's say the second um, reference I selected this age. 
So it's going to create the plane that is at 45 degrees with respect to this first face that we selected in the first reference. And then uh, we selected that it passes through the edge and it's at 45 degrees. So these type of uh, constraints you can make it. For example, if I make it 30 degrees, you know, it's creating this plane at uh, 30 degrees with respect to, you know, the direction that it shows. The face that we selected and the plane that it creates has the 30 degrees and it passes through this line. So, uh, you know, it's pretty uh, intuitive some of the times as uh, how you should define these, uh, you know, the faces or edges uh, in order to create uh, these different types of planes. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, uh, how we create a rib feature. So rib is basically adding a support uh, to the two faces, just as you look at this uh, rib icon here, we're going to create the rib exactly like that. Okay, um, so let's uh, create, in order to create the rib, anytime let's say you want to add this triangular uh, feature here uh, as as a rib support for the two faces, vertical and the horizontal face, we need to create the sketch line. And let's say I want to create a sketch line uh, starting from, let's say, from the midpoint of this uh, horizontal line to the midpoint uh, of this horizontal line up at the uh, top face of this face. Then uh, first I need to create the plane so that I can create the line on that plane. So I want to go to the reference geometry, click on the plane, and my first reference will be to click on this edge. And again, it shows that in uh, in finite uh, number of planes that can be created that will pass through this edge. And so it is showing in this yellow color, which means that it's still looking for the second reference. So for the second reference, if I click on this far edge, so there can be only one and one of plane that can be created that will pass through these two lines. And so that uh, fully defines the creation of this plane. And I click OK. And once I create this plane, uh, I'm going to right click on the plane and click on sketch. Either I can orient it normal to my viewpoint or I can you know, create the sketch uh, from let's say from midpoint. To this midpoint here, and click OK. So this is why you need to create the plane for creating the sketch lines like this, because uh, otherwise there is no way that you can create uh, this uh, sketch line like this without uh, the creation of the plane. So once you create this uh, sketch lines, uh, I can uh, exit the sketching uh, mode. And go to uh, features and go to rib and once I click on the rib uh, most of the times it's not showing the direction in the correct way so it's showing uh, you know it's going like a sideways as you can see the thickness uh, indicated by these two yellow lines uh, we can change that thickness either it's on one side as you can see that with respect to the sketch line we created it's showing only on the one side or it shows from the other side, but only in one direction. But this is a midway, so five millimeters and five millimeters. We need to change uh, the extrusion direction so that both these yellow lines are in that plane as we've created. Right now, they're out of plane. So if I click on that extrusion direction, now I can see both these yellow lines are lying in that plane and sort of completes a rectangle around uh, the sketch line here. Okay, And also make sure that the direction of the extrusion is pointing downward. It should not point upwards because we want to add the material in the downward direction. So again, that's important. Uh, we can change the thickness of the rib that we want to add. And once we make sure that these yellow lines are within that plane, and the arrow is pointing downwards, and then if we click OK, then the um, rib gets created. So it's fairly simple, um, you know, feature that um, you know we can create. Let's take a look at another example of 
the uh, drip. So let me first create um, a circular sketch here. And let me extrude it uh, a little bit so that it goes over uh, the extent of the uh, part pipe. And let us say we want to create the rib that will support this heavy cylinder by providing the support between this cylindrical face and this bottom face. So let's say we want to add a rib uh, to support this cylinder. So in this case, uh, in this case, what we want to do is that we don't need to create any extra plane in this case. Uh, it's very important that whenever this uh, notification comes, please save your document. Uh, you know, otherwise, all the work that you did will uh, will just uh, will be lost if you know the system crashes. Um, so in this case, uh, we don't really need any uh, extra plane. Uh, I can click on uh, the face here, and I can just simply start sketching on that uh, face. So once I orient it normal to the viewpoint, anytime when you create the rib, all you need is just one sketch line. So I'm identifying this point here at the perimeter of the circle, and I'm just going to connect it with the Sorry, mine got created at an angle, but I can just click on it and make it vertical. But it shifted the other way, so um, just delete it and one more time create it. So, first, I'm going to wake the center. Of the straight line from here. So what I did was I really created just one straight line, a sketch line that connected the, uh, the cylindrical face and the edge on that face where we want to add the uh, rib. Once I come out of the sketching mode, go to features and rib. One more time, you don't really need to come out of the sketching mode in that sense, but uh, that's fine. Once you click on the sketch line, it gets activated. Again, here I want to change the extrusion direction so that it's, uh, you know, as for what you want to add the material, it's going inside the direction, which is fine. Um, if I reduce it to, let's say, 20 millimeters, and that's all you need to do the uh, verification of, and once you click OK, the rib gets added like this. So it takes care of this, uh, you know, the curve uh, face, you know, that connects the rib with the cylindrical face. So that is the big advantage of using the rib feature. Otherwise, if you were to create this uh, rectangular sketch here and then extrude it up, there will be some gap remaining because of the uh, cylindrical face and the straight face. But with the rib. Uh, that gets taken care of and you know there is a smooth continuity between the cylindrical face and the rib. Okay, so the rib is a very important feature uh, that uh, you know we should be able to uh, create it. Uh, the next one is the shell feature. So after the shell feature I'm going to quickly do the linear and circular pattern and then uh, you guys can get started working on the uh, assignments. So just bear with me for a few more minutes uh, before uh, you, know, you start working on the assignments. So the shell feature. So I'm going to go to the new part and uh, click on the top plane. And let's say uh, I find the dimensions and all that, and then create uh, the um, solid model like this. So the shell feature, what it does is that it creates uh, the pocket uh, in the solid model based on the, what face we select and based on what thickness that we specify. For example, if I click on the shell and click on the stop face, and let's say we use the 10 millimeters, uh, I can click on show preview or if I say shell outward, then the dimensions of the solid model will be retained and the material will be added from the outer side. Otherwise, uh, if I click like that, uh, then 
it will be uh, from the inside. Um, so if I click on this check mark here, uh, what we can notice is that all the way around the thickness is 10 millimeters. So if I first look at the given lines visible option and I go to evaluate and measure Uh, if I click on these two lines, uh, you can notice that the distance is 10 millimeters. Or if I uh, try to see uh, the distance between these two lines, again, you can see the 10 millimeters thickness. Okay, so the thickness is all the way around uh, 10 millimeters based on you know how we created the shell. So that's with uh, just one uh, thickness setting. But let's say we want the thickness to be 10 millimeter uh, with respect to this bottom face and uh, you know this pocket. Let's say that the distance between uh, this face of the pocket and the bottom face to be 10 millimeters, which means that we want a thickness of 10 millimeter at the base. But around the walls, let's say we want uh, only 5 millimeters thickness. So in that case, we can right click on the shell, edit feature, or we can go to multi-thickness uh, settings and once I click on this input window, it activates it. I'm going to change that to And uh, then I'm going to select these outer walls so that five millimeters thickness settings can be assigned to them. However, this face with the 10 millimeter is still the same. So once I click OK, now you can notice that the side walls are having five millimeter thickness and the base is still uh, 10 millimeters. And we can verify that using evaluate um, measure. Evaluate measure is a very important tool that you always need to keep checking um, you know, anytime you create a solid model and you want to verify if you really create it accurate enough or not, uh, because if your mass is not matching up uh, with the standard answer, then it means that somewhere the dimensions have gone wrong. So you have to use the evaluate and measure. Let's check uh, this if it is five millimeters. It says distance five millimeters, uh, so that's the five millimeter thickness. And let's check how much is the distance between um, the top face of that pocket and the bottom face. And it gives area and parameter here, but it also shows uh, what is the distance. Okay. That also you can notice here, distance is 10 millimeters. So that's 10 millimeter shell thickness and 5 millimeters around it. Um, again, you can watch in the video also that uh, you know, I have uh, used the mirror feature uh, to do a little more stuff on this. If I go to, um, let's say, mirror, mirror face. So let's say if I use this mirror face, you can use the option of either features to mirror or faces to mirror or bodies to mirror. So if I click on the bodies to mirror, use that the other bodies created with the mirror option and I click OK. And now you can see the same part is duplicated on this side as well. Okay. You can always reorder the features. For example, if I want first mirror and then shell, so I can simply click and drag this and place it under the boss extrude. So boss extrude, mirror, and then shell, but now it has some errors. Why are there errors? Because uh, this edge uh, is now missing. So we can close this error, right click on the shell feature, edit feature, and it says that it, it has a missing face which was earlier existing here, but now it's no longer there because we use the mirror first and then we are doing the shell. So I'm going to right click here and delete that missing face and then add this face. And then click OK. So now your error gets fixed. And now, you know, this was the boss extrude first, then we mirrored it, and then we shared it. So it really uh, depends on, you know, how, uh, which order that we create the features also. Uh, that's also important. 
Again, when we create the mirror, we use uh, the merge operations. If I right click on the mirror, edit feature, merge solids option was uh, checked. If I uncheck that and click on it, now you can notice that only one side is shell, but not the other side. So you can, you can do a lot of things by simply just changing the order of the features and that way your entire solid model can be created in altogether different way. All right, so that's uh, the shell feature and the mirror feature. And um, yeah, the dome feature is uh, something that, you know, um, you don't really use it all that often, uh, but uh, you, know, you can just simply click the face that you want to create the dome and it basically elevates it uh, by assigning a predefined algorithm for the curve and just based on the distance. So you can watch that in the video for the shell and the dome. It's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So let me now uh, go back uh, to the um, linear pattern and the circular pattern. So again, I'm going to come back to this same L-shaped part. And if I select this face first um, and uh, try to try to uh, you know use the uh, sketch on that face to create the feature first. So I'm going to first let me make a circle here, for example. Let's make a circle and of course we can assign the dimensions and all that. If you go to features, extrude cut to all and then click OK. So, you know, I have added this feature here on the top of existing features. So the first feature was boss extrude and the second feature is this cut extrude. And I can go to the linear pattern. There are various options here. There are so many different types of patterns. Uh, the basic uh, two patterns that we will be using at the basic introductory level are the linear patterns and the circular patterns. Although in the next class, I'll try to cover some of these other fill patterns or the um, sketch driven patterns or the curve driven patterns. I'll, I'll talk about that in the next class, but uh, for, for now, uh, and of course for this course, only the linear and circular patterns uh, are enough to understand you go to linear uh, pattern, select the direction one, number of instances, let me make them as say, for example, four, the direction two is, let's say I want to select this direction. Also, you can, uh, you know, flip the arrows in which you want to create uh, those instances. Uh, let's say we make uh, two instances for now. And so here is the option, either you can use the features to pattern or you can use the faces to pattern. If you have created the feature, then you can simply expand the model tree and let's say I use this cut extrude feature. So that gets selected automatically and uh, let me adjust the distance here. Like this. So that way, you know, depending on how you um, select the number of directions and instances, you can create the uh, linear pattern. So it's pretty, pretty simple. It's very similar to the linear sketch pattern. Uh, yes, in the sketch also, you can uh, use the, uh, you know, the linear sketch pattern also. So this one, you know, we, we, we selected as, uh, yeah, you can use the mirror entities, of course, yes, you can do that. Um, so in this case, we use the linear pattern by selecting the feature that we wanted to pattern. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you create, uh, let us say, you know, let me just real quick, uh, make a new part here. Um, what I'm going to do here is that uh, create uh, the same Part five. Let me um, let me just make a rectangle with the uh, this option. 
the center rectangle object. So if, if this is the face on which I want to create, uh, you know, some of the uh, linear pattern features, but let's say I don't create the feature and I just create it during the sketching stage itself. And let's say I extrude it, click OK. So I already have a part created with the hole in it during the sketching stage itself. So now if I go to the linear pattern, and let's say I choose this direction one for the instances, um, you know, let's say maybe like this. Um, yeah, you can use the second direction as well. So the idea here is that you don't have any features now to uh, pattern this because this is not a feature. This is being created in the sketching stage itself. So this is not an identifiable feature as we just looked at in the previous example. So in this case, you can't really have the features to pattern, but you can use the faces to pattern. And uh, I will have to select all the faces that I want to pattern and then click OK, so that way I can create the uh, pattern based on the sketches, uh, you know, instead of uh, using it from the uh, from the features that were already existing there. All right, so that's the linear pattern, and then just to finally conclude with for uh, today, uh, today's uh, you know the review for this module two um, is that uh, I'm just going to go over a new part to just to show the uh, circular pattern and it's the exact same thing as uh, you know what I just talked about as we can create it during the uh, sketch uh, itself or you can uh, create uh, by adding the feature as well. So let's say I create this circular disk for example I don't have any features here except this boss extrude. So I'm going to go here and um, create another feature. For example, uh, let's say I create this sketch and then I uh, either extrude boss or extrude cut. It doesn't matter as long as it's the uh, feature. So if I say through all, click OK. So now this is the added feature on the existing boss feature. We have added the cut extrude features. If I go to the circular pattern, I select this circular direction on which uh, I want to. I want to first uh, select on the input window, and then I select this uh, edge. Let's say we go with the equal spacing, 360 degrees, and eight instances. So here again, the two options: either features or faces. So if I click on the features, because I have the feature available as the cut extrude, you know, then I can create the circular pattern like this.